briefly, can you talk to us about how well Nigeria has done when it comes to information technology? Because um, uh, a report last year, talking about 2022, showed that uh, there are some countries that uh, have edged Nigeria when it comes to the provision of information technology and how well they've adapted to technology, talking about South Africa, Kenya, uh, Ghana, Tunisia. How well is Nigeria doing before we look at how we can explore uh, growth potentials in the region? Well, great question, and thank you for having me again. Um, quite humble. Um, so how well has Nigeria done in terms of technology? Um, I, I, I'm an optimist um, all the time, so and so I would I would always say that Nigeria is Nigeria is doing Nigeria is doing well. There's more that can be done, but and and um, because there's a lot of challenges that we face as a large um, country. So, um, but in with those challenges come a lot of opportunities that exist for technology, for technology experts, for technology companies to be able to hone in on, and be able to um, come up with products and services that can better the lives of Nigerians. Um, so. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's Kenya, South Africa, Egypt, I think um, last year they got more funding in, their, in the tech space than Nigerian did. And I would, I think, and, Nigeria did, and, 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 and I don't think that Nigeria really did terribly uh, because some funding still came into our tech sector. A lot of new, um, new fintech products came up, a lot of, um, a lot of funding in the in um, in the agri sector, in um, in payments, in um, in um, in loans, and so on and so forth. So yeah, um, we're not doing so bad, but there's but there's so much to be done um, um, in the tech space in Nigeria, and to be able to attract more funding um, in Nigeria. Okay, that report also showed that um, Lagos is renowned for uh, tech startups, but there is a disconnect uh, between the city and other parts of the country, uh, majorly because of uh, infrastructural challenges. So what policies, what uh, can Nigeria do to encourage these local uh, tech startups uh, to expand and to have a wider reach, not just within Nigeria, but also across Africa? Okay, yeah. So um, I, I, I mentioned something on the last segment where I was talking about the, the Startup um, Act that was signed um, um, last year. So um, in, in this act, a lot of a lot of challenges that were envisaged or that have been experienced so far are things that have been looked at into this. Of course, implementation is always the bane in Nigeria. So hopefully, we hope that with the new government that they are able to um, um, key into into um, into this um, policy and help um, scale it up um, across. So yeah, um, Lagos has been a hub for 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 um, tech startups and the financial services, and um, and it is no brainer. Just just like you said, because there's a lot of infrastructure, and I dare to say also because of the um knowledge that exists within that space so there's a lot um the 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 level of tech awareness the level of service awareness is a little bit higher in lagos than you would find in most other parts of the country so um in abuja it's also taking shape and um there are some there are some tech hubs here and there and um, startups here and there um, um, doing amazing things for um, enabling government services, enabling um, government products, and, and so on and so forth. So I think it's a gradual thing, and um, and as this awareness, this this service awareness, this tech awareness takes over or moves um, across the country, across the city centers, into those particular into uh, into the other states and into into the rural areas and i think that uh, we'll begin to see a surge of more products more tech products that will cater to um to um to the diverse problems that exist in all of these places so i think beyond government 
um, beyond government advocacy, beyond government, um, also trying to do, um, trying to use technology to enable some of their own services, which they are doing in some ways. I think that there needs to be some level of tech awareness and advocacy for tech awareness and advocacy for service awareness. So, so that these things become almost like a basic thing that you find everywhere. And with that, people begin to, people are able to begin to think out of the box. People, people are able to begin to innovate. And the moment people, people are begin to in, innovate, then it becomes uh, a, a catch fire. So I would like to see a place in like in Aba, where locally, within that particular place, people begin to think of, oh, how can tech, tech, technology um, and help us sell most of these goods that we create? How can technology help to improve the quality of the goods that we create? How can technology help us to reach more people? And, and you already that on, on social so social media people um, for us and so forth. So yeah, so we can do more. There's so to to um, to be um, things that awareness, that service awareness, that service culture. All right. In the area of fintech, Nigeria has really, really done well. So are there potential growth for Nigeria or even areas of collaboration uh, where Nigeria can facilitate cross-border uh, transactions? Yeah, so much. Um, I think today um, some, of, some, um, some of our products have moved beyond Nigeria. So... Um, and companies like uh, companies like Fairways, companies companies like um, um, company, um, even even I would I would I would like to say that Momo, which is a product of MTN, so um, so those kind of products have gone outside the shores of Nigeria and they are doing quite well. And I think that there is more um, that that can be done. I think that um, establishing those kind of fostering those kind of regional um, tech collaborations would work. Um, um, Investment-friendly policy, um, that is ease of doing business. Uh, those are some of the things that um, trigger and intrigue uh, most of these companies to be able to want to do business um, in other countries. So tax incentives, um, um, repatriation of repatriation of um, repatriation of um, of profits and so on and so forth. So these are the kind of things, these are some of the challenges that we faced in Nigeria. And I know these are the kind of things that most countries um, put in place. Most forward thinking countries put in place to be able to attract um, 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 tech preneurs, um, tech investors. Before the, before, the ban of, uh, before the ban of Nigerians to Dubai, I know a lot of tech, tech preneurs were moved in, into Dubai, especially the crypto at the time, at the at, at the height of the ban by CBN of of crypto, a lot of them moved to Dubai because those are friendly, uh, because those are friendly um, ecosystems to tech entrepreneurs, and with a lot of people there doing amazing amazing work. Most of those since would have come into Nigeria. Nigeria had a more open uh, own uh, to that as of uh, um, tech with regulations and. Uh, proper KYC and so on and so forth. So I think um, investment friendly populists um, um, would be some of the things that drive um, that drive these kind of um, collaborations. So I know um, there's been a back and forth between Flutterwave and, and Kenya's authority freezing their assets and so on and so forth. So these are things that oftentimes slow down this inter uh, this um, this um, this movement into other other countries, but I believe that Nigeria Nigeria has become taking lessons from all of this and uh, we will do better. Okay, away from fintech, let's look at telecom. Now, Nigeria is regarded as Africa's largest ICT uh, uh, market with uh, about 82% of telecom subscribers uh, in Nigeria. When you look at the entire Africa, you have 82% mm. of Africa's telecom subscribers in Nigeria. But we've seen that most of the telecom providers are not indigenous uh, uh, providers. But is there a chance for Nigeria to have more indigenous providers of telecom services and even expand to other parts of Africa? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that that's 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 a fantastic question and, and it's a source of concern. We see we see what Glow is doing and I commend what he's doing in in, in terms of even even um, doing and setting a lot of things. I think they were one of the first first telecoms to gain fiber and um, bringing fiber up to cable into Nigeria and the likes. And those are some of the things that we need to encourage. I think the Nigerian government needs to actively encourage. I know um, honorable mention, just to mention, uh, um, because I was following long conversation with Reno Amokri, and he was talking about buying Nigeria, that the more you, the, you use um, low services, the more you use services like um, like uh, like MTSTV instead of DST, then you use services, then you use services that are not homegrown, the more FDI we're able to gain, the more uh, our becomes in that. Not to say that these other com um, companies invested in the MTN and DSTV are invested in you know, enough, and there is a lot of low and evil at the We need to be able to open our um, open our um, open our ecosystem for more players. I think barrier is the major key um, in the telecom. In the telecom. So how much? From line is my idea. I think there's a. I think if I'm I'm here, I'm right here. Afab, Uma is an individual com com. If Afab would have that kind of regional and um, black mile, um um um, um what's it called now? Um, like, um, so on and so on and so forth. And it will be because the barrier of entry into buying that five license, that kind of money is is, is huge, is a lot. So that barrier into to this space needs to needs to be down. I know when it's also what how money and so forth, but yet in if we are able to open up this more to allow um allow um, local players to play in there by reducing the barrier of entry then it becomes easier for um, um, local content on the address a lot of the issues that we face. I think funding also internal funding you know, is quite key. Uh, banks um, and the likes um, need to be able to come together to be able to actively by themselves, not by when God say, oh, uh, we need to fund uh, you know, it is by them themselves. They are just going Sticking to the five um, 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 companies that are willing to to um, with with the competency to be able to do this and sort them finally, so they're able to buy these licenses also and be able to deploy their expertise and their and uh, and their low knowledge into 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 the telecom sector. All right, let's look at collaboration now. Now, during tech experts are fast earning global recognition and respect. So what collaborative initiatives can Nigeria uh, implement to have some form of um, collaboration for training of um, IT professionals to bridge the gap of shortage of ICT professionals within the region? Since we, uh, we have lots of them here, and like I said, uh, the tech experts in Nigeria are beginning to earn global recognition. So what is the, is, is there a market for Nigeria there? Human capital development in ICT? CT. Yes. Yes. And, and so when you, when you think of the enormous potential that, 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 that Apologies for the glitch there. We have um, um, an audio issue with uh, our guest. And um, while we work to resolve that, uh, it's good for you to know that um, there are different areas for collaboration for Nigeria when we look at the ICT sector. All right, so um, our guest, Ibrahim yeah. Suleiman, is back to look at these areas for cross-border opportunities. All right, you were talking about... Um, human capital development in ICT sector. Is there a market for Nigeria within African region? 
Hello. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, great. Okay, great. So, um, so talking about the um, the enormous potential for the tech expert, Nigerian tech experts in the region, and right now I was saying that um, a lot of focus is on Europe and and North America, and that is because of um, the en the earnings that we get from this from these places. So um, I think that um, more regional more regional initiatives, more regional policy initiatives will help um, um, divert that focus into into um, back into Africa and also uh, deliberate um, deliberate policies by these regional um, governments also to say, okay, we are looking for African content. We are looking for local African content. We recognize that Nigeria is, is a leader on the continent in this area. And we need to, and we, and we deliberately need to um, um, hunt these people to come into our into our space and um, help us build what, what they've done um, in Nigeria, what they're doing um, outside Nigeria also. So um, I, I think that I, I think those deliberate um, those deliberate um, um, government efforts would be able to to attract more. Nigerian tech experts to focus on the regions. I know a lot of Nigerians also focus on Kenya and South Africa. And to be honest, it is because the earning power there is quite high. So as compared to maybe you talk of Gabon, or maybe talk of Niger, or talk of and so on and so forth. So I think that if these kind of things are put in place, whereby um, Nigerians are able to earn uh, more the way they earn in Nigeria or the way they earn um, in Europe and so on and so forth in those particular places also. It becomes a proper motivation for them to be able to get into, into those particular places. I also think that um, um, just um, more collaboration, um, scaling what we've done in Nigeria in terms of spreading those kind of things in other neighboring countries, that would also help in terms of um, pushing that agenda because the more we the more we go into those particular spaces, pushing the agenda for um, um, using tech for inclusive payments, uh, using tech for agro um, sector, using tech um, using for financial services and, and so on and so forth, the more we begin to be able to um, show leadership, bring in our expertise, and be able to also um, impart and transfer knowledge as we as we have as we have in Nigeria and, and what we need to solve our challenges also. Okay, countries like uh, South Africa, Egypt, Kenya, Ghana, and Tunisia are not doing badly when it comes to uh, technology. What are the chances of um, a kind of collaboration that would ensure a share of expertise, not just Nigeria wanting to tap into the market, but share expertise here? Because sometimes when uh, there is a gap, it seems like that gap is filled uh, with expatriates, I'm talking about people from um, the West. But what about sharing expertise within Africa? Mm. How can that happen? Yeah, so, uh, uh, and, and I think it's, it talks to one of the things I mentioned earlier, which is a deliberate need by regional African governments to be able to say, we are, we are, we are deliberately looking for sourcing for local African content and not expatriates. These, these and that we believe in our, we believe in 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 our local content in Africa and we want to use those local content to develop um in Africa. I think things like the um, AFTCA, um the that's the African trade continental agreement also needs to be robust enough to 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 also um, tackle some of these particular issues. So um, where you have, like in Nigeria, we have the um, local content, um, um, the local content um, policy, where in the oil sector, where you say, oh, you must use um, a percentage of Nigerian expertise, Nigerian people to be able to do these kind of things. I think that is something that, that needs to scale into 
at, at, um, at a continental sub-regional or um, at a continental level also, whereby um, um, like um, policies at AU level, policies at ECOWAS level, policies, policies at also regional level are deepened to be able to say, we would use local content so that one, we don't pay, we don't have to pay so much for these expatriates coming into Nigeria. We recognize them um, into, into the continent. We, we recognize the, that our people also have this expertise and we, we need to be able to use them to develop our own. So those are some of the things, those are, those are deliberate um, actions that need to take place also. Um, and I think also um, come standing um, as a Nigerian, coming from a Nigerian point of view, like I mentioned also, um, we need to be able to, if we want to become as Nigerian, if, as Nigeria, if we want to become that tech, if, if we want to pick that tech leadership role, then our products, our innovation, our, um, our, our hubs need to begin to move out of Nigeria and move into into those countries also. That is, and begin to train, begin to train people, begin to um, offer um, offer exchange programs and so on and so forth to be able to um, um, to be able to deepen our um, our stake in the education and impartation of of tech in those countries. And that way, we'll be able to um, foster that kind of collaboration that we're looking for and deepen um, um, that continent um, collaboration that it should be, local content that we're looking for. Okay, now if Nigeria uh, and other parts of Africa had to uh, be fully embraced, other parts of Africa where you have um, startups, where you have tech experts providing uh, these services, if they are to be fully embraced and accepted, uh, how can we develop local solutions to needs that are particular to Africa? Wouldn't that be the way to make it accepted if we have apps that uh, address local needs, if we have solutions, uh, tech solutions that address local needs? What is the way to go about that? Yes, I, 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 and I believe that, that that that's already happened. So you see um, solutions like shorter wave solutions. They are they are in Kenya, they are in Egypt, they are in South Africa. They they are moving into Senegal and so on and so forth because these uh, these solutions, these products, these app products, like you call them, have solved um, challenges in Nigeria. They've done so well. And they recognize that if it works so well in Nigeria with all of our diverse challenges that exist, then it becomes easier for it, for them to be replicated in those part, in those parts also. And of course, not just that Nigeria, not just that those Nigerian companies just take the products, go there, and and do what other Western countries do here. They they engage local, they engage the local expertise there because you recognize that okay, local expertise are needed to be able to fine tune your own product, to be able to meet the challenges of those um, people within those particular countries. So that is the way to go. Our products need to um, 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 cross borders. Our products need to embrace um, um, local experts to be able to um, fine tune the solutions to meet those, those local um, needs. And that is how you begin to see that embrace. Um, of um, local products um, or, or continental-wide products, just like Flutterweave is doing, just like um, uh, Paystack is doing, just like um, MTN is doing. So um, and so you begin to see this um, happen as more as more um, as more um, companies begin to move um, across border. So and you see that happening today within the countries that embrace tech adults. So within Nigeria and Kenya and Egypt. So you see, and South Africa, you see that that um, um, that migration of products and technology to help power um, power um, power their fintechs, power their logistics, and the likes. So yeah, you're very correct. 